My name is Danielle. I am married and I have a four-year-old daughter named Tuesday. I absolutely love working with children. I'm a nanny. I help with the family, help with the chores. I feel I'm working with kids mostly because they accept me 100% of the time and they don't care about what my teeth look like. My teeth have been decaying since I was a little girl. I have at least seven teeth that should have root canals. My teeth have been decaying so bad that some teeth cause pain in my jaws. It shoots through my head and I just start feeling nauseous. Most dentists I have been to think that my teeth became bad when I was young and I had lots of medication. Recently this year, I was just picking at my teeth because they hurt and out of nowhere, tooth just crumbled in half and I just sat there for hours and just cried and cried and cried. It hurts when my daughter's like, why are your teeth so bad, mommy? Like, why are your teeth falling out? I always feel hopeless about this. I don't have the kind of money to fix it. <laughs> my biggest dream of my entire life is just to have a perfect smile. A nice, straight teeth, no pain, would just mean everything to me. I think it would change my entire life. Here to help us explain what's going on with Danielle's periodontist, Dr. Sanda Moldovan. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You know, yeah. Let's first talk about the emotional toll that clearly this is taking on Danielle, and I'm assuming so many other people out there. Yeah, Travis, I really agree with you. I think the problem is with teenagers, especially in early 20s, mm -hmm. what we see is that they feel ashamed. And I see a lot of girls walking around with bad teeth, covering their mouths. They don't want to smile, they don't want to go out in public. They don't want to be social. Well, I'm sure it's with guys too, but especially with women, physical mm -hmm. appearance, you, you know, really plays so much into your self-esteem, whether it's your smile or your hair. I mean, we just, you know, all of these things just really affect a woman's self-esteem. And, and they found out in the U.S. that 55% of people say it's one of the most important things in physical sure, appearance. Yeah. And a lot of people will make the assumption when they see someone with poor dentition, that you know what, they just don't take care of themselves. And I think mm -hmm. uh, I wanna focus on this because mm -hmm. just because someone has poor dentition does not mean they've done anything wrong. Let's mm -hmm. talk about what could be causing this for Danielle and so many other people out there who have poor dentition despite maybe doing all the right things. I agree with you. Oftentimes we see these problems, uh, Lisa, starting as early as uh, in, during pregnancy mm -hmm. and could be due to antibiotic mm -hmm. use, could be due to malnutrition right. oftentimes or even severe illness as uh, young babies. It's actually yeah, very important in pregnancy because there's certain, there's one, especially tetracyclines, that we absolutely do not um, prescribe during pregnancy because we know it's associated with dental abnormalities later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, a few years ago, we, a study came out that sh showed that uh, kids, with, when they were young babies, between ages six and three months, if they mm -hmm. were on a certain antibiotic, it tended to double the risk of tooth and animal problems later on in life and it kind of reminds us that you got to be careful with any medical treatment that, you know has potential for you know a rare side, side effect like this yeah. and uh, you know it, it, you need to make sure you use it, antibiotics appropriately when they're necessary and, and not use them when they're not, not necessary. And that was a study of the antibiotic that's typically used mm -hmm. for kids who have ear infections. Yeah, which very common. We know it, it quite commonly used. So mm -hmm. is, is this just one more thing to ask yourself you know what do I really need or does my child yeah. really need that antibiotic? Yeah, that's a really good question parents should always be asking. And, and I always encourage my, my, my patients, um, you know, if you're coming into the doctor, don't ask for antibiotics. Ask, almost ask for the opposite. Ask the doctor, do you really think I need these? Because I'm kind of hoping I don't. Then, you know, if the doctor feels the freedom to not give them, uh, it, it, you, you, you will get better care and the doctor will probably sit down and talk to you, you know, why you don't need them or why you do need them and, and, and go from there. Mm 